The way you position yourself on a motorcycle can change the way the motorcycle handles. Moving your weight around on the bike can have a fairly substantial impact on how the bike behaves and how it reacts to certain inputs. Proper posture also impacts how well you can control the bike. I'll go through some examples of different riding posture and explain what's good and bad and why. Right here we have a very common cruiser style of riding. People like to sit on their cruiser as if they're sitting on the couch at home and lean nice and far back and reach forward for the handlebars. This is not good for several reasons, one of which is the straight back. When your spine is straight on a motorcycle, that means every single bump that you hit, even though there is suspension on this bike, and it's gonna move up and down when you ride over bumps, every bump that that rear wheel hits is gonna shoot straight up your spine and into your brain. It's gonna bounce your head around, it's gonna be fatiguing, it's gonna wear you out. The other issue here is the straight arms. You have no real control over the brakes and the clutch and the throttle when your arms are straight. Straight arms are stiff, you can't smoothly apply throttle, your fingers get stiff, you can't smoothly apply the front brake or use the clutch. Straight arms are always bad when it comes to riding a motorcycle. Here we have bent elbows at least, but it's still a straight spine and that jarring motion on your head. So this is also not a good position. The straight spine also just leads to the arms being stiff. Even though the elbows are bent, the arms and the fingers are still going to be stiff. Here's uh, just a quick example of what we don't want to see with the throttle. That kind of uh, throttle position, when you start to move forward, that hand is going to roll back and that's going to push you further back. As the throttle rolls on, your whole body moves backwards, that pulls more throttle on, and that means your whole body goes backwards and you basically have zero control. This is good riding position. Slight curve to the spine, bent elbows, straight wrist, this gives you good control over the throttle and the brake and the clutch. And as you go over bumps, you can just absorb that impact by letting your back curve a little bit more as you go over the bumps. This is a hard thing for people to accept that you're supposed to have what is generally considered bad posture, curved spine, not super curved, but just a slight curve to it and then your shoulders slightly forward. This nice relaxed position, you want your arms to be completely relaxed. You're basically just resting your hands on the handlebars and then hanging your arms off of them. The more relaxed you are, the more control you're gonna have over your bike. This is a very common position that I see from people riding sport bikes. It's a straight spine, and straight arms. A lot of people ride sport bikes like they're doing a push-up the whole time. That has to be exhausting. You shouldn't be holding your body weight up with your arms. You should be using your core and your knees to hang on to the bike. Your hands are on the handlebars to control the clutch and the brake and the throttle and to be able to steer the bike with counter steering. You are not supposed to be putting your weight on the handlebars. You've got terrible control of the bike. Again, straight arms means sloppy control. Your hands are stiff, your fingers are stiff. You simply don't have good control. And especially on a sport bike, that's gonna matter. Sport bikes are very responsive and sloppy inputs will lead to very sloppy riding. This is basically the same idea, only sitting further back. It's still a straight spine. It's still doing a push-up. This is actually worse than the last 
picture because all the weight is now back or on the handlebars. It's just sloppy, sloppy body position. It gives you terrible control. This is good riding position. Finger covering the clutch. Nice and relaxed through here. Shoulders slightly forward, slight curve to the spine. Balls of the feet on the foot peg. Same, uh, same basic position for the throttle hand. The wrist is flat so that if you accidentally give it too much throttle, you don't all of a sudden get flung backwards and end up putting on more throttle. Nice, stable body position. Now with a bike like this, there's a lot of room on the seat to move forward and backwards. You can dramatically change the handling of the bike by where you put yourself on that seat. If you move all the way to the back, the front end gets light and it uh, is prone to wheelies. If you move forward while well, you're braking hard, the rear of the bike gets light and you're prone to doing stoppies. But if you move to the back of the bike while you're stopping, as all that weight transfers forward onto the front wheel, you're keeping weight on the rear wheel, which keeps the rear wheel from coming up as quickly. This bike is designed with a lot of room on that seat so that you have those inputs, so that you can impact what's going on with the bike. On a dual sport or standard style motorcycle, you have the foot peg basically right below the seat and you should be positioned basically right above the foot peg. Again, balls of the feet on the foot peg, shoulders slightly forward, arms bent, wrist flat, finger covering the clutch, finger covering the brake, slight curve here in the spine so that you can absorb any bumps and hanging on with the knees. This is just a standard riding position for going down the road. Uh, this is an aggressive bike. My body position will change a lot as I'm riding. I will often slide forward to get some weight onto the front wheel or slide back to get some weight onto the rear wheel. The seat is large for that reason, so you can do that. But as far as just riding around goes, sitting here, keeps my weight evenly distributed over the front and rear wheel, and that's what you want to keep the bike nice and balanced, and it will behave well. The most important thing about riding posture, no matter what kind of bike you're on, is the relaxed arms and looking ahead. I generally have to tell students to look slightly up from uh, parallel to the ground just because people always have a tendency to look low. If you're looking directly in front of your bike, if you're looking down here at the front wheel or just in front of it, you're never going to see what's going on in front of you. You're never going to be able to make a plan. So keeping your eyes up is important. Look where you want to go and keep your arms relaxed, your whole body relaxed, but especially your arms without having relaxed arms, you simply do not have control of the bike. I think that's going to be it for the basic posture. Uh, I'll get into turn posture once I talk a bit more about turns.